Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Uber avails VTOL air taxi concept model. NTSB issues investigative update on the Southwest engine failure. And One Week Wonder and Royal Air Force 100 set for Air Venture 2018. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's May 9th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Uber CEO Dara Khosra Shahi is showing off a model of the company's concept for a VTOL flying taxi it hopes to have in revenue service in two years. Khosra Shahi said that the concept is to create the network around those vehicles so that regular people can take these taxis in the air for longer distances when they want to avoid traffic at affordable prices. Uber Chief Product Officer Jeff Holden said that the program is intended to be community friendly. The aircraft will initially be piloted, but would eventually be autonomous and carry up to four passengers in an effort to reduce costs through ride sharing. Uber says that for the program to be profitable, it will have to have a mass appeal and not be limited to a niche market. The aircraft will operate from designated skyports. Passengers would use a smartphone app to request a ride and then go to the skyport to board the aircraft. They would be powered by electricity and fly below 2,000 feet. Uber anticipates initial testing of the service in Dallas-Fort Worth and Los Angeles in 2020, with a rollout of Uber Air in those cities in 2023. After the break, King Online Drone Course customers can now study when offline too. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news by at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Aspiring drone pilots now have a convenient way to continue their studies, even when they are offline by using the free King Companion app for iPad or iPhone together with King School's online drone pilot license test prep course. The app allows drone pilots who are preparing for the FAA Part 107 Remote Pilot Knowledge Test to download their lessons, including all texts, graphics, videos, and post-lesson quizzes, and take them when offline. When back online, course progress is automatically synchronized with King's servers, and available from any other device. Longview Aviation Asset Management of Calgary, Alberta, in cooperation with Viking Air Limited of Victoria, British Columbia, has launched the Viking CL415 EAF conversion program. To initiate the program, LAAM will be hiring up to 150 technical and support staff members at its Calgary facilities where 11 specially selected CL-215 aerial firefighting aircraft owned by LAAM will undergo the modification process, utilizing Viking-supplied conversion kits. The Newport News Shipbuilding Division of Huntington Ingalls Industry has built 70% of the structures necessary to complete the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy. Like his predecessor, the first-in-class USS Gerald R. Ford, Kennedy is being built with a modular construction technique, where smaller sections of the ship are welded together to form larger structures called superlifts. 
Aviation Pathway, a new proposed high school aviation curriculum, has been announced by the Wichita Public Schools and WSU Tech at the Textron Aviation Citation Longitude Line. If approved, it would be the state's first aviation technical education pathway. Through the program, high school students will have the opportunity to receive their high school diploma and technical certificate at graduation creating the potential for immediate employment within the aviation industry. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The NTSB has issued an investigative update for its ongoing investigation of the fatal April 17th engine failure on Southwest Airlines Flight 1380. The Boeing 737, powered by the CFM International Engines, experienced a failure of the left CFM 56B engine after departing New York's LaGuardia Airport. The engine experienced a failure of a fan blade, which resulted in the loss of engine inlet and cowling. Fragments from the cowling and engine inlet struck the fuselage, causing a rapid depressurization. The crew conducted an emergency descent and diverted to Philadelphia International Airport. There were 144 passengers and five crew members on board. One passenger suffered fatal injuries and eight passengers suffered minor injuries. The airplane was substantially damaged. According to the investigative update, the aircraft's maintenance records indicate the fan blades were last overhauled 10,712 engine cycles before the accident. At the time of the last blade overhaul, blades were fluorescent penetrant and visually inspected. The CVR transcript will be released when the public docket is opened. The incident marks the first fatality involving a U.S. registered commercial passenger air carrier since the 2009 Colgan Air Flight 3407 crash near Buffalo, New York. After these messages, One Week Wonder and Royal Air Force 100th set for EAA Air Venture Oshkosh 2018. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. From July 23rd through 29th, more than 10,000 aircraft and half a million flight enthusiasts will descend for EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2018. This year's event will again feature the One Week Wonder Project. Over a seven-day period, volunteers and attendees will build a complete Vans RV-12. Piece by piece, visitors will assemble the aircraft and sign the builder's logbook. Construction will begin at 8 a.m. on Monday, July 23rd, AirVenture's opening day with a goal for completion by the end of the afternoon air show on Sunday, July 29th. AirVenture will also celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Royal Air Force. Known for its heroism in the Battle of Britain, the RAF will feature an array of World War I and World War II aircraft, early fighter jets and modern RAF aircraft on display in Boeing Plaza and in the air during the shows. On Wednesday, July 25th, the grounds will host Women Venture, a national initiative to close the gender gap in aviation. And in honor of its 70th anniversary, the Air Force Reserve Command will bring its impressive fleet of military refueling aircraft as part of Air Venture's Year of the Tanker. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.